We'll stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. As we come here in our grief to farewell Margaret, St. Paul comforts us with these words. Don't you know that all of us who were baptised into Christ Jesus were baptised into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. If we have been united with him like this in his death, we will certainly also be united with him in his resurrection. You may be seated. Our Saviour, Jesus Christ, has destroyed death and brings immortal life through the Gospel. So let us remember with thanksgiving what God has done through Margaret.
Okay. Um, thanks for all your attendance today. Um, really appreciate it, um, including those international tra travellers that have travelled over Bass Strait um, for the celebration of Mum's life. So when Mum was first diagnosed with cancer in December last year, um, we asked Mum to start writing down some stories of her life. Um, now, we didn't get all the way through those stories that we had planned, but um, when we were preparing this, we just thought it was appropriate that we share some of her words um, instead of just hearing from us and some facts. And so you'll bear with us, it's still pretty raw, um, but we just thought it was appropriate that um, we were able to share with you um, some of those words that are precious to us. Um, so we'd like to include some excerpts of that throughout this message um, shared with Lisa and Paul. Uh, Margaret Jones Starrick was born December 5th, 1945 in Hamilton, Victoria. She was the youngest child of Alfred Conrad Noski and her mother, Maria Magdalena Fredderica. Born and raised on the family farm in Minamite, along with her two brothers, Everard and Bruno, and sister Doreen. So we'd just like to share some of her first memories that she's had. And Mum writes, It's hard to remember what I remembered first. However, feeding pet lambs from a bottle with a long red teat, with cats round to catch any drops of warm milk from the lamb's bottles comes to mind. And Doreen was always there with me. There are so many childhood memories that I hope I don't bore you. The farm was a wonderful place to grow up. There were trees to climb, cats and kittens to play with, chooks to feed and dogs to run with. We had a border collie sheepdog named Laddie. Whenever he wasn't working the sheep with Dad, he rounded up the ducks in a perfect circle and drove them all over the place. We always had to help milk the cows, feed the chooks and gather the eggs. And then there was shearing time when the whole farm got into gear. Mum cooked mountains of cakes and scones for Smoko. Dad, Everard and Bruno helping to get the sheep into the wool shed with the help of the dogs and the shearers busy with their machines. Doreen and I helped sweep the small bits of wool away from the board where the shearers worked. And there was always time to jump into the large bags of small pieces of wool to snap them down, ready for pressing into large heavy bales of wood, wool, ready to sell in Geelong. Those bags were a perfect place to snuggle into wool to have a spell, which happened quite often. Doreen and I spent hours playing together. Our favourite game was big girls. I was Valerie and Doreen was Lynn. We both desperately wanted long hair and me in particular. So we found the binder twine, a thick white string used for tying hay, hay in bundles and we made circle for our heads with long pieces of string around it to make plaits. We swished them around and wore them all day long. Life was simple in those days. Just yeah, I so. so she was baptised in St Michael's Lutheran Church in um, Tarrington, Victoria, and confirmed in the Emmanuel Lutheran Church in Hawksdale, Victoria. Yeah. Um, as Mum writes, six years of primary school and four years of secondary school passed quickly. Teenage years were always difficult and mixed up like all teenagers were. I travelled to Warrnambool on the school bus every day which took an hour and a half per day, so after four years of secondary school, I left. I stayed home to help mum on the farm for a while, but then found an administration job in Hamilton. I never planned to go to Hamilton, but it seemed that it was the destination to live and work there. It turned out to be exactly what I wanted and needed. My first job was disgusting. It was in the pathology department of the hospital and they worked on bloods, blood swabs, etc. The most disgusting thing they did was to do pregnancy tests on Queensland cane toads. Yuck! They were putrid and swelled to high heaven. Consequently, that job didn't last very long before I got a typist job to the State Government Office in the Public Work Department. There I stayed for six years and, and left when I was pregnant. Mum met Jeff when she was boarding with Kay in Hamilton and they attended the Luther League Social and things moved on quickly from there. Margaret and Jeff were married on the 21st of January 1967 in the Emmanuel Lutheran Church in Hawkesdale. And Mum writes, the 21st of January 1967 dawned a bright, hot, sunny day with a north wind threatening to blow. The farm was awakening and there was an air of excitement in the house. Weeks of planning, cooking and preparing has taken place and now it was time to put it all together for our special day. The church service was to take place in the Hawksdale Lutheran Church at four o'clock and the reception in the Hawksdale Hall at six. 
Friends and family began to call in with gifts and good wishes, and soon enough it was time to go to Jules to have our hair done in her little salon in Hawksdale. Kay was my bridesmaid, and my cousin Lynette was the other bridesmaid. I didn't think Doreen was able to come over for the wedding, as she now lived in New Zealand, so sadly she wasn't in the wedding party. As the day rushed by, the hot north wind began to blow, and it soon became hot and dusty. The photographer arrived, and the photo shoot began outside the garden. As the photos were being taken, we heard the blaring of car horns as Jeff and the best men rushed past on their way to church. Well, I knew I wasn't going to be stood up. We had the loan of a um, maroon Mercedes as our wedding car, which was decorated with white ribbons, and the other cars were Dad's black and white Ford Falcon and Everard's white Falcon. We arrived at the church 10 minutes late and the service began. Our little two-year-old niece from Queensland, Lois, was my flower girl, and sadly it all became too much for her and she dipped out at the last moment in floods of tears, and she looked so cute too. After more photos, we arrived at Hawksdale Hall and greeted the guests. The food was lovely and the 80-odd guests enjoyed the evening with speeches and laughter and music and dancing. The day was over all too soon and after going around the circle of family and friends, we say goodbye and very hurriedly left off in the best man's fast triumph so that we were not followed by my brothers and friends. The day was over but a new life as Mrs Jeff Jeffrey Starrick began and 57 years later, we are still happily together. How God has blessed us. <clears throat> As Mum writes, our biggest adventure was the decision to sell our three-year-old house and pack up and move to Tasmania. Andrew was only five months old, so it was pretty hard on our families and to say goodbye. We packed the pot plants, our cat, the goldfish and the baby and left for Melbourne. Jeff went on the ferry, I flew with the baby the next day. Jeff was to meet me at the Wynyard Airport after getting off the ferry, however, he was more than an hour late. So I was left sitting in the airport with nowhere to go. So that was the beginning of the life in Burnie. Mum and Dad's life in Burnie started um, living in 42 Sterling Street and was busy with work and raising a young child. Life moved on quickly when they bought a block at 75 Grandview Avenue and started building. Lisa soon arrived unbudgeted and the family grew. Early in the 1970s, life continued to be busy for Mum, raising two young children, helping with the milk run and eventually working in Starrick's shoes shop. Work life was broken up with regular visits to Beauty Point, firstly on an on-site van and then onto the shack on the eastern side where years of fun and enjoyment were shared with others, families and many, many memories made. In 1976, Paul was born and grew up as the apple of her eye. Being the youngest, he was the golden child, who deeply missed his mum whilst at childcare. He would bawl his eyes out so much that the staff had to call mum in to console him. Yet despite her efforts, he remained inconsolable. Eventually, he became the only child to be expelled from the Bernie childcare facility. <laughs> and mum writes, Early 1986, I was changing into my bathers at the shack when I noticed a lump on my right breast. Wanting it to be nothing to worry about, I left it hoping that it would go away. Andrew was 16, Lisa 14 and Paul only 9. They still needed their mother and I wasn't prepared to leave them. Time went on and I finally had a visit to my GP who sent me straight to a surgeon for a biopsy. The biopsy turned out to show some cancer in the breast so that it suggested a mastectomy. I was in the hospital for the operation very quickly. I've never been more grateful to Kay for dropping her family duties and coming over to look after Jeff and the kids whilst I was in hospital. It was the best gift. It was a difficult time for me and Jeff. However, with God's help, we got past it and life went on. It was a learning curve for my faith in God as I knew I could trust him and he would help me. I remembered an Old Testament story of King Hezekiah he became very ill and a prophet came to see him to tell him to get his things together because he was going to die. King Hezekiah turned his head to the wall and cried and prayed to God to spare him. Before the prophet left the king, God told him he heard his prayer and let him live another 15 years. I then asked God to spare my life until the children were old enough to care for themselves. He has given me 38 years. I feel ashamed that I am not more grateful. God has been so good to me. Death doesn't scare me. It's just what one has to go through before death. 
I know that I'll be taken to heaven to be with God and my loved ones because I believe that Jesus died and rose again to give all believers life after death. Life did move on and soon enough grandchildren started to take the pride and place in mum's life. Damon, Jovi and Avalon came onto the scene followed by Holly, Jesse, Luca and Meg. The kids were precious in mum's eyes and she cherished her time with them and I'm profoundly grateful for the priceless and irreplaceable moments that mum dedicated to spending with the grandkids, as well as for the values and the profound compassion that she lovingly instilled in each one of them. Finally, we'd like to share the last instalment that mum was able to complete for her life story. So now I fight my old nemesis again. This time with not much success. I know I don't have a lot of time to spend with you, but I want to remind you of my love. For all Andrew, Lisa, Paul, with such pride and happiness and closest you shared, you have chosen your parents well, partners well, and I, <laughs> I love all three of them. Please remember that baptised children of God. He loves you and wants you to remember and believe in him. Take your cares and worries to him and we will take cares of them for you. Now I love all my seven grandchildren. Each one has a special talent, far more than I can ever imagine. What does the song say? They will know far more than I will ever know. Please never forget how much I love you. Joby, Avalon, Luca, Holly, Jesse, Meg and Damon. You are unique in every way and perfect in God's eyes. Go live your life in peace and safety and be happy. To Jeff, you are my rock. You care for me more than I deserve and I couldn't have lived all those years without you. I'll wait for you in heaven.
You fill up my senses Like a night in a forest Like the mountains in springtime Like a walk in the rain Like a storm in the desert Like a sleepy blue ocean You fill up my senses Come fill me again Come let me love you Let me give my life to you Let me drown in your laughter Let me die in your arms Let me lay down beside you Let me always be with you Come let me love you Come love me Like the mountains in springtime Like a walk in the rain Like a storm in the desert Like a sleepy blue ocean You fill up my senses Come fill me
We give thanks to God, our Father, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, for our sister Margaret. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, comfort us in our time of mourning, for you are the only source of true comfort. And in your love, you long to comfort us. Care for us in all our grief and remind us that you are always near. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Verses of Psalm 73, which we will say responsively. Yet I am always with you. You hold by my right hand. You guide me with your counsel, and afterward you will take me into glory. Whom have I in heaven but you? And earth has nothing I desire besides you. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever. Amen. Let's now hear the word of the Lord as it's written in the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians in chapter 4, beginning at verse 13. Brothers and sisters, we don't want you to be uninformed about, uninformed about those who sleep in death, so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who've fallen asleep in him, just like Margaret has done. According to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive who are left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who've fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with a trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so 
will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the word of the Lord as it is written in the Gospel according to St. John in chapter 14, beginning at verse 1, where Jesus says, Don't let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come back and I'll take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? And Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And this is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise be, be to you, O Christ. Christ. We'll sing. Grace, mercy and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. We pray, Lord, sanctify us in the truth. Your word is truth. Amen. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. This is one of several exclusive I am claims that Jesus makes and that are recorded by John in his Gospel. The phrase, I am, is important. To the Jewish ears who first heard these claims, they knew exactly what I am meant. I am was the name that God, the creator of the whole universe, had given to Moses on the mountain and from the burning bush. When Moses challenged God with concerns that the children of Jacob would not listen to him, God gave Moses his name and said, Tell them, I am 
has sent you. When Jesus makes his claim, I am, those who knew the story of their people, their ancestors, would have immediately known he was claiming to be God and giving them further information on the nature of God. I am the way, the truth and the life is the claim that Jesus makes about himself. The alternate would be lost, lies and death. Many of Jesus' I am statements touch on the inevitability of death. Earlier in the Gospel, in chapter 6 of John's Gospel, he said, I am the bread of life. That is, he gives what is needed to feed people for eternal life. The alternate, of course, is starving to death. And when he brought his friend Lazarus back to life, he told Mary and Martha, Lazarus's sisters, I am the resurrection and the life. All these claims regarding life and death are exclusive. He says, no one comes to the Father except through me. And also, if anyone eats this bread, talking about himself, he will live forever. All these claims Jesus makes about himself point to the fact that eternal life is only found in him. But he also tells us, by saying, I am the way, that he is the path to get to this eternal life. How can we know these claims are true? The simplest answer is that Jesus promised his disciples he would suffer and die and then rise from the dead. And he did. That is the celebration of Easter, the decorations we still have in our church. We celebrate that Jesus did do what he promised to do. And a great number of people witnessed him after his resurrection. Firstly, his 11, 11 remaining disciples, sometimes as individuals and other times as a whole group, witnessed his resurrection. Then others who had believed in him, even up to 500 in one crowd, witnessed Jesus after his resurrection. And finally, he even appeared to one who hadn't believed in him and had even actively persecuted Jesus' believers. He appeared to the Apostle Paul. The resurrection is Jesus' proof of all his claims. A feat that is a little hard to fabricate. And thanks be to God that Jesus also gave his words and his, the Holy Spirit to these witnesses of the resurrection so that they would record it for us to read and learn. The fact that Jesus did do what he promised, that he suffered, died and rose again, proves that what he says about himself is true. But we need to consider lost, lies and death. This is what Jesus once removed from our lives. We could summarise these into sin and the effects or consequences of sin. Many people, and this might be you, wonder about the suffering that we have in our world. The evil that is allowed to reign. And even the mistakes that we each make. These are all consequences and effects of sin. These are the things that Jesus desires to save you from. If we remain outside of Jesus in our sin, we are lost in lies and the result 
is eternal death. If you do not believe Jesus' claims, this is what you should expect has happened to Margaret in these recent days. She is lost to death. Soon we will carry her body to a hole in the ground where she will continue to decay. There is nothing left for her. That is the claim of those who do not believe in Jesus. Her suffering has not finished as her suffering continues into decay. You will not see her again because there is nowhere for you to go and see her or you to be together. There's no destination, no way, no better place. Death is only a sad and sorry end and always too soon. If you do not believe Jesus' exclusive claims, that is what you should expect for Margaret and for yourself. But if you believe Jesus' claims about himself and his claims about the creator of heaven and earth, as he calls him in this passage in John 14, the Father in heaven, and you believe his claims about you, that you are a poor, miserable sinner like all of humanity, then you should believe something very different about where Margaret is and therefore your mourning should be vastly different to a sad end. You should mourn as if you have hope. Hope for something vastly different to death and decay. The hope that Jesus promises when he says he is the way, truth and life. You might even be excited that the suffering of sin and death is over for Margaret. For she believed the claims of Jesus and knew for sure that he was taking her to be with him. You should also be overjoyed that the suffering we observe here on earth has nothing on the glory of the eternal presence of the God of the universe. Margaret was confident that Jesus had prepared a place for her with her heavenly Father. She knew that Jesus was the way, the only way, And the way he had prepared was a path through death and into life. For death is not the end. In Jesus' claims, earthly death is merely part of the way to eternal life. It is a sharing in Jesus' death. Margaret trusted in Jesus' claims on her life, that she was a sinner in need of saving And he was that saviour. Therefore, we should not mourn as if there is no hope. Because Jesus has destroyed death by his resurrection and has called us into his new life. He has led the way through death into eternal life with his heavenly Father. He promises to take those who believe in him, to be with him, and to enjoy his gifts for eternity. Gifts away from all the suffering and pain of this sinful world. Gifts that far surpass the pleasures of this earth and dwarf the suffering of sin that he has promised he has overcome. Jesus says... I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Amen. And the peace of God that surpasses all our understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. I invite you to stand.
let us confess our faith in the triune God in whose name Margaret was baptised and in who she believed as we say the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord God, our Creator and Redeemer, before whom the generations come and go on earth, we thank you for all your people who have lived on earth before us, have served you faithfully, and now live eternally with you. We thank you too for Margaret, for the gift of life and your grace to her, for her faithfulness to you and service to others. Above all, we thank you that you have brought Margaret through the valley of the shadow of death and have taken her from us to yourself. Bring us all to the joy prepared for those who love you through Jesus Christ our Lord, Amen. We pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord watch over you as you go out and as you come in, now and forever. Amen. We'll be seated as we sing.
I'm going to ask the pool bearers and uh, Jesse to come forward. And we'll stand. In the sure hope of the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come, we take the body of our sister in Christ to its last resting place. Let us go in peace in the name of the Lord.
I've heard there was a secret chord that David played and it pleased the Lord, but you don't really care for music, do you? It goes like this: the fourth, the fifth, the minor fall, and the major lift, the baffled king composed and high. Took the name in vain. I don't even know the name, but if I did, well, really, what's it to you? There's a blaze of light in every word. It doesn't matter what you heard. The whole. My best, it wasn't much. I couldn't feel, so I tried to touch. I've told the truth. I didn't come to fool you. And even though it all went wrong, I'll stand before the Lord of Song with none. If you brought your service order with you, you may wish to pick it up again. The peace of the Lord be with you. Amen. We are all born weak and helpless. All lead the same short, troubled life. We grow and wither as quickly as flowers. We disappear like shadows. In the midst of life, we are in death. To whom can we go for help but to you, Lord God, though you are rightly displeased because of our sins. And yet, Lord God, almighty, most holy and most merciful Saviour, deliver us from the bitterness of eternal death. You know the secrets of our hearts. Mercifully hear us, most worthy judge eternal. Keep us at our last hour in the consolation of your love. Amen. Our Lord says, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live, and everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Since Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in his gracious wisdom, has called Margaret from this life, we commit her body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Dust we are, and to dust we shall return. But we know that as Christ was the first to rise from the dead, he will raise up our mortal bodies to, uh, to be like his in glory. We commend Margaret to the Lord, trusting in his infinite mercy. 
Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, who has created, redeemed, and sanctified Margaret, body and soul. And we pray, merciful God, by the death of your Son, Jesus Christ, you have destroyed death. By his rest in the tomb, you have made holy the graves of your saints. By his glorious resurrection, you have brought life and immortality to light. All who die in him rest in joy and hope. Keep us with Christ in the company of all who wait for you on earth and all who surround you in heaven. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus, remember us and help us to pray the prayer that you have taught us. And we pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The God of peace, who brought back from the dead, our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, equip you by the blood of the eternal covenant with everything good so that you may do his will, working in you what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory now and forever. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Go in the peace of the Lord. Amen.
wake up where the clouds are falling.